Gorilla 5 video series. In this lesson, we're going to learn about shoot days and production phases. Now, to get to the calendar to create shoot days and production phases, from the Gorilla toolbar, you want to select the calendar button. This is going to take you to the calendar screen, and if you don't have any production phases or shoot days, Gorilla is going to prompt you to create a production phase and attach some shoot days to that particular phase. So let's go ahead and explore this screen before we actually create some shoot days. Now the first thing it's going to ask you here is to name your phase. Now by default, when you create a new phase, Gorilla enters Principal Photography. and We can go ahead and accept that name or we can modify it by either selecting a different name here in the pop-down menu or simply by clicking in the field and modifying the name if we want to modify that name. Gorilla is going to ask you how you want to display this particular phase on your monthly calendar. Now I'm going to select first line. It allows you to display up to five different phases on the calendar at the same time and I'm going to explain that uh, when we get into displaying the calendar. It's going to ask you to select a color. Uh, now it says here more colors available when editing phase. This is just a starting color. You can modify that at any time. So that's fine. We'll select keep the default blue color for this production phase. Over here, it's going to ask you to select the phase type. Again, Gorilla assumes that the phase you are creating is a shoot days phase. Phases can be either shoot day phases or non-shoot day phases. You want to use non-shoot day phases for, again, non-production um, days. So, for example, location scouting or editing or post-production planning or meetings, that kind of a situation. And I'll explain that. Uh, a little later. We'll create a non-shoot days phase later. And then down over here, it's going to ask you for your start and end date for your particular phase. Now, it's going to enter today's date when you create a start date. Now, that's, of course, probably not your uh, start date for your uh, production. So we can go ahead and modify that by clicking in this field and then from the calendar, selecting a shoot date. Now I'm going to go ahead and uh, select a date a little bit in the future here. So let's go ahead and select June 1st. And over here, you can select the week shoot. So if I select, for example, four down here, notice that the end date automatically gets populated with the uh, appropriate end date if I selected four weeks. It's going to be four weeks from the start date. Of course, I can select one week, I can select two week, etc. And if none of these uh, suit me, I can click on this end date, of course, and modify the end date over here. Now, I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And it's going to create a phase now that is going to have a start date of 6-1 and an end date of 6-8. Now, let me explain production phases. Production phases um, basically are ways to manage your shoot days. You can have as many production phases as you want. So let's look over here on the top left-hand side of the screen. Notice that we have one production phase, the one we just created. Uh, with these shoot days attached to it. Now let's quickly create a second phase just to show you why you would, if you want to, create a second phase. You don't have to. You can have just one phase for your entire production, but sometimes it makes sense to create a couple phases. I'm going to go ahead and click on the Create Phase button over here. It's going to take us directly back to that screen that we were in before. And I'm just going to modify a little bit of the information here. Let's call this a pickups phase. We will say display on the second line here. Uh, we're going to keep the shoot days. We'll change the color down here to a different color. And of course, the shoot start date we want to modify also. So what we want to do here is let's say start this on July 1st. And this will be just uh, one week here for this particular phase. And click OK. And what's going to happen now? and you'll notice here on the calendar, is that we're going to have two phases. We're going to have a principal photography phase that we created earlier, and now a pickups phase. And the, they both have different start dates and end dates. So let's go ahead and select our principal photography phase. So we're going to work with that particular phase. And these are the dates for that phase. Now, if you wanted to select an off day for any one of these dates, we can go ahead and select that particular day in the 
off day column here. So if I select day four here, Monday, I'm sorry, Monday, June 4th as an off day, notice what happened. Notice that not only, of course, you have a symbol here that indicates that this is an off day, but notice that the shoot days have changed. We now have seven shoot days over an eight day period because this is no longer considered a shoot day. Now, if you wanted to travel on a particular day, we can go ahead and select uh, the travel button here in the travel column and notice that the travel label appears in the label. Now, notice also that the shoot day did not turn into an off day. That's because it's possible to have travel and shooting at the same time. It's up to you whether or not you want to make this an off day. And you can do that, of course, by selecting on the day off column over here and now this indicates that this particular day will not only be a travel day, but will also be an off day. So let's go ahead and deselect that, and that's how you uh, take an off day off. Now it's just a travel day. Same thing with holidays and non-shoot days. So that's how you mo modify and manipulate all your shoot days. If you wanted to modify shoot days for another phase, for this pickups phase, you would select that phase. Notice that phase is now active up here on your calendar. And notice that we are seeing now only shoot days for this particular phase. You can now modify information here in terms of off days and travel days. Now I want to show you something else. Let's go ahead and edit a phase. So if I wanted to edit my principal photography phase for whatever reason, I can click here, make sure the phase is selected, and then click on the edit phase button. Now the edit phase button allows you to do two things. It allows you to modify the phase details. Notice the phase details tab here. And of course, that includes the phase name and how you want to display it on the calendar and the phase color. So let's go ahead and modify the phase color, for example, to a more soothing color. That's a nice color there. We'll go ahead and click Apply and click OK. And we just modified the color for that particular phase. Let's go back to Edit Phase and show you the other tab here, which is the Shoot Days tab. And this allows you to modify, of course, the shoot day. So if you wanted to uh, change the end date for, for some reason or the start date, we can go ahead and select those uh, that field here and modify any of these dates and then click OK. And we will come back to this calendar with a different set of shoot dates. OK, the next thing I want to show you now is the Calendar button. Now this button up over here allows you to display your shoot days in a calendar view. So let's go ahead and select that. And it's going to open up a nice large calendar here and you can see how the color coding matches very nicely. Uh, and it will show you all your phases that you have created. Now of course I've got my principal photography phase here. Notice that I've got my little travel icon over there for that day. And down over here, I've got an off day button right there. I'm sorry, an off day label for this particular day. And down here, we have our pickups phase. Now, this also allows you to view information for that particular day by clicking on the color bar. So if I click here on this particular bar here for day three, notice that a little pop-up will appear and I could view crew call times for my day, cast call times if I have any. I can enter notes if I want for this particular day, and I can view and create meetings for this particular day. And we're going to get into all of that uh, a little bit later in another lesson. Let's go ahead and close that and close this and then click OK there. Now, lastly, in this uh, calendar section here, this is where you can uh, put in a label for that particular calendar. So for example, if I want to put in over here, and moving to another location, uh, and up over here, we want to actually say first day of shooting, whatever you want to do here on this um, calendar label, if I go back to the calendar button there, notice that the label has, has uh, been updated here to display what it is that I entered. And this is important because if you click the print button down here, this will allow you to print the, this calendar in this particular view and it will print those labels on that particular calendar. 
Okay, the next thing I want to show you is uh, crew and cast call times, but I can't, and that's because we haven't entered our uh, crew yet in our contacts module, and we haven't done our strip board. So before I enter my call sheet information, as you can see right over here, let's go ahead and click this button for uh, this particular day. This will allow you to create call times for your crew and for your cast. Now we happen to click the first day here, of course, June 1st. So in this window that pops up, we are now showing only information for June 1st. Now notice down here, we have some tabs. We have our crew call times and our cast call times tab. Now in order to enter crew call times, we need of course to enter crew. Now we haven't done that yet. And same thing with cast call times. In order to enter cast, we need to do our strip board. Now, in order to explain that a little bit better, I have a little label here that will help you understand that. Crew call times. Remember, crew call times is about crew. And if you don't have any crew created, you can't set call times. So before you do call times for your crew, you need to go into the contacts module and create your crew. And we're going to do that in another lesson. Now, similarly, cast. Now, cast call times are based on the cast members that are scheduled for a scene. And we can't schedule cast call times unless we've done our strip board. So the strip board must be completed before setting call times. And again, we're gonna go over cast and crew call times in another lesson. That's a wrap. Have a great shoot. Thank you.